Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back. So today I'm going to show you a demo of auto selecting an item in AR. This is part of my XR interaction toolkit. So I just want to show you how you can auto select items. So right now this is auto selected and normally you have to select an object and then, you know, rotate it. So the workflow, it's always select, translate, scale. But there's a lot of times when you want to, you know, you may want to auto select something because there's really no reason to select it yourself and you want the system to do it. So it turned out to be a little harder than I thought. It's an easy solution to a hard problem to find. So as you can see, this is, I'm not selecting it, I just started dragging right away. So how do you accomplish something like that? And I'm also going to show you how we can add, so let me go back to that video how we can get the, basically the rotator that you saw at the, at the beginning of the video. So if I go here, you're gonna see how we can actually implement something like that that is rotating when we have selected. So I'm gonna show you that as well in this video. So one of the things that I'm going to start doing is we need to implement a, a new extension for the XR components. On the previous video, I show you how we can use the placement interactable and how we, we can actually inherit from it to be able to, you know, to implement a new new functionality, which in this case is going to allow us to just place one object at a time. So we're inheriting from the AR-based gesture interactable. So I'm gonna do something similar, but this case is going to be an inheritance for, for the AR selection interactable because we want to do another select. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new file and this one is going to be just called the AR selection interactable also going to be called the it's also going to be a C sharp of course and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say public and we're gonna say class this one is gonna be the AR selection interactable auto the reason why I call it auto is because it's going to be auto selecting the items that we are spawning into the scene and we need to inherit from the AR selection interactable and I try to do so many different things to make these to make this work and you know it turned out that it was way easier than I thought but like I said in the beginning it was it was a little harder harder to find because it wasn't really well documented so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say I'm gonna also add a bool and this is gonna be the gesture selected so it's gonna say gesture selected I'm gonna add a getter and also a private set and then I'm gonna set it to true by default because I wanna know, you know, as soon as I spawn this object, the object that is going to have the C sharp file, I want to be able to, you know, select it automatically. So if we look at the implementation of the, you know, of the base, you're gonna see that this has multiple objects and methods. Actually, yeah, this one is gonna be an object. This one is gonna be, you know, a few methods. So we're gonna have to override this method right here, which is selectable by, so it's gonna copy that and just you know paste it then we're also going to be bringing a new namespace which is going to be the new unity engine xr interaction toolkit so it's going to be adding a new using a statement on the top and then all we need to do here is just say return actually return true because this is gonna by by default we want to select the item so that when we try to do a translation these this item when, when i refer an item i'm talking about the game object it's going to be auto selected so that we can start translating and scaling. So that's everything that we need to do there. Let's go ahead and go back into Unity. So now what I need to do is I'm going to be creating a new prefab. So I'm just going to be cloning. We can just clone one of the ones that we already have. And we can just rename it to be auto. I'm going to double click it. And when we double click it, we're going to be looking at some of the components that we have on it already. And you know, one of the things that I did is I, okay, I have a new one, so I'm just gonna delete this component and it's gonna give you an error. The reason for that is because part of the workflow is that the translate interactable is expecting a selection because you can't really translate unless you select. So what you need to do here is you need to say, you know, I'm gonna use the AR placement interactable. See, well, actually no, not that one. I'm just gonna search for, search for auto. And it looks like that one doesn't show. Let's just go ahead and do select. So it looks like it doesn't show yet. Let's see why that it's not showing just yet. We might have, uh, oh, okay. And I, I don't think I named it correctly. So let's go ahead and rename it. And I'm just gonna call it auto. So that's it. Let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And I wish Unity would tell you something better than, you know, you couldn't find this script, but it's my fault. I didn't, I didn't name it correctly. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say add up. And now you can see that, it, that we can find it. So now we, we have to, we, we don't want to have to, right? We want to remove this one. So the reason why we don't get an error now is because the translation now that there is an AR selection because we're inheriting from, from, from the AR selection interactable. And what I'm going to do now is just going to move it up because I like to have them in order. So this one is going to be right before the right before the translate. So and then that's really everything that we need to do. the The next thing that we can do is we can get the air selection. But I'm going to do a, I'm going to use a different air selection because the one that we have for this object it's going to be just the bounding box and it's going to rotate. I wanted to add a you know a retycle something that looks better. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and go back here and we're going to have to set these in just a second. So that's everything as far as like the setup for auto selecting so this is going to auto select the object as soon as we spawn in we spawn the object with the air placement interactor and then what's going to happen is we're going to be able to translate scale and then we don't really have to select the object it's going to be automatic so what i want to do now is i want to go let's go ahead and jump into photoshop and it's going to create a new just a new ui we're going to do let's go ahead and do 800 by and this is just going to be a, just a basic UI so that you get an idea of how to set it up. If you need to do something similar, I like to always start with black on the on the background. So it's going to make that black. This one is going to call it background. And I'll just show you. So, and then the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go here and I'm just going to make it, you know, keep it pretty simple. It's going to do, I'm going to add two, basically two different circles in here. And we're just going to start with the first one. And then the next thing that I'll do, I want to group this. This one I'm just going to call it circle. I'm going to drop it here. This one we can just say it's called focus. doesn't really matter what we call it. It just needs to make sense to make sense to us. And then the next thing that I'll do is I'm going to add the add a line that is going to be crossing. And I'll just resize that line a tiny bit so that it matches kind of like the width of the and I'm not a pro in Photoshop whatsoever, so some of you who are pros in Photoshop might say, Dilmer, there's easier ways, and there's probably easier ways, but this is the way that this is the way that works for me. So this one is gonna be the vertical line, vertical line, and then we can just do we can just clone it and I'm just gonna say horizontal. Horizontal line, and I'll just rotate it. There we go, and I think I think that looks so we can do that one. We can also do a variation if we wanted to do maybe, you know, another one right here. And I'll resize in just in a minute so that we can fit them both. And make sure that I'm holding the shift key so that I do the constraint scaling. And okay, this one can just be, you know, number two. Number two, it's fine. Just move, move it to the bottom. This one is one. And just make sure we have them in order. So on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be, we can just change it just a little bit. I'm just going to be rasterizing these two layers. And we can just grab our, our tool here to the rectangular marquee tool. I'm trying to, trying to find out what the names are because I always use those tools, but I never look at the names. So and then I'm just going to move it. Well, we don't want to move the layers. We just want to move this right here. So I'm just going to do it. We can just put it right there. And then what I can do is select the layer. So we just have you know two different variations of the of those. So if we wanted to use it in AR, we can use those. And then I'm just gonna you know hide. So one thing that I don't want to do here is I don't want to have any background. So on the circle, let me go ahead and go back into that. So on the circle, if we uncheck this, I don't want to. So I can go into the properties and then let me go ahead and see if I can snap it here. Oh, we can just yeah, we can just do that. So this one, I just don't want to have any background. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Just take out the background. Excellent. And the other thing that I want to do is I, I want him to be white. And I should have done that in the beginning. So we can just add a color over color overlay here. And it's going to set into white. That's fine. Normally, I would just start the line with that color. But since we didn't do it, I can just do this. And now we just have or and just close this. So that's basically the UI piece. So let's go ahead and save that out and make sure that I'm on the right project. I normally just call this UI. We can just save it. We can just close out of it. I'm going to need a new package here because we're going to be using the sprite to the 2D sprite. So I'm just going to go ahead and install it to basically slice the sprite because it's going to have two images. 
So let's go ahead and so it should be done in just a second. And then what we'll do is we'll just slice it and then assign and then just create a new game object that is going to have that image. So it's going to go here, select the UI, and then go into my, so I think, oh yeah, just change the texture type to be, you know, 2D and UI. I'm going to select it that it's going to be multiple. It's going to hit apply. Then we're going to go into our sprite editor. Just click on slide, slide. And then it's going to, it's not a slide, but a slice. I think my accent is jumping in there. And then <laughs> hit apply, and then it should create two different images. All right, so now we have the two, two different images in there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a, let's go ahead and create a new empty game object. This, is, this one is going to be the, the new AR selection. I'm just going to be removing that one. We can just move this one up. I'm going to right click here and go into and search for, actually it's not going to be the UI, it's going to be just a sprite. So we can just do that. Now we have the sprite inside. And yep, looks like that looks good, I think. This one I'm going to be offsetting back to zero, zero. Make sure that, and, and in fact, I don't really want to, we can just keep the scale, I think, I think that's fine. The, let's go ahead and go into the sprite. So this one I'm just going to call it Retycle. And I'm going to be, let's just go ahead and use, it doesn't matter which one we use, we can use this one, just different. And it's going to be giant, right? We need to, we need to scale it down. It's going to do, let's do 0.1 on all of them. I'm going to also rotate it by, by 90 degrees. Now we can have, you know, we have something cool in there to play with. And then what we can do is we can just, let's go ahead and go into auto graphic and click on X so we can align it perfectly, perfectly. And something like that works. Doesn't need to be perfect. And then the last thing that I'll do is right here, I'm going to look for my rotator script. And I'm going to just make sure that, you know, I am, I have a speed of 100. So basically what's going to happen when this gets selected, it's going to start rotating. So I need to go back into my AR cube object, go into the AR selection, and we got to select the selection visualization. So it's going to drag it and drop it. And I'm going to show you how we can test this before we put it in the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play and we might get some warnings or errors, or we might just not get anything. I think that's fine. And then I'm going to go into my scenes. And actually my prefabs, I'm going to be dragging and dropping that. So you can see that now, you know, that's showing correctly. You can increase the speed if you like to or decrease it. That's really up to you. And then the last thing that I want to make sure that we have is on the air placement interactable, go all the way to the very bottom. Make sure that we associate it with the new prefab that we created. So it's going to drag it and drop it there. And then, you know, and then the last thing is just, of course, go to build settings, add the open scene which we didn't create a new scene. I should have created a new auto scene. So I'll just do that and then check it in that way. But we can just do it really quick here. So I'll make sure that we, we keep everything intact. So it's gonna be auto. Let's go ahead and go back into this one and fix this one so that it points. The reason why I do this is that I want you guys to be able to run the, these examples as, as, you, as you watch the video. So if I make changes to a scene, then it's really not fair to you. So I'm gonna go back into auto here. And now we, we have, so we should have the same object, basically the two different scenes with one with the auto, one without the auto. So looks like everything is good. Let's go back into build settings, click on add open scene, and make sure that you drag the right scene here. And probably we can just double click here, go to build settings, and then add open scene. So it should be good. And then the last thing is just, of course, you just gotta build it. I have already built something similar, so we can just do a pin. And that's everything that you need to do. So. If you guys have any questions on anything that I just show you to auto select an object with the XR interaction toolkit, please let me know in the comments and also make sure to check out my Patreon page where I'm basically posting early access to source code. Thank you guys.